Hi there. My name is David Tattersall. I'm the CEO of Integral. We're the folks who make Fusion Reactor, Fusion Analytics, and Fusion Debug. Today, we're going to be looking at Fusion Reactor's production debugger and explaining why Fusion Reactor goes beyond traditional APM tools. Traditional APM tools can tell you when something is good or bad and even alert you when something seems wrong. But they don't provide the level of detail software engineers need to get to the actual root cause of an issue. That's why developers end up grepping through the log files, generating stack traces, diving into the heap, or including debug data directly into their source code. We believe that when something breaks in production, developers need detailed information. They need real-time insight and transparency into what the application is actually doing at the point that it's breaking in production. Fusion Reactor is the only product of its kind to highlight errors and give you the ability to safely perform real-time debugging of any issue in your production environment with minimal overhead and minimal effort. So let's take a look at the production debugger in action. In order to demonstrate the production debugger, I've got a little JSP example here. And you can see this little JSP file takes a parameter called arg and uh, all it does is just perform a string length operation on that argument and then prints out the length of the string and the actual string itself and if we go in here and we run this together with a string hello world then you can see hello world it's 11 characters uh, in length and just to show that hello world if I change that to hello world fusion reactor then string length changes and the string also changes. So let's see what happens when we run this and remove the argument. Yep, as expected, we get a null pointer exception. And let's take a look in Fusion React and see what that looks like. So I'm going to click here. This is my response codes um, page for 500 internal server errors. And if I refresh this, you can see I've now got um, the request, which I just ran. This is my JSP page. You can see here um, it's nullpointer.jsp. That's the file. I got the 500 error. And if I click into the request details, I can see all the transaction details for this request, including the status code, the request ID, which URL was called, which uh, client IP address it was called from, how long uh, it took to run, so what the execution time was, whether there was any JDBC data, et cetera, et cetera. I can also see how much memory was used with this. Um, yeah, so a lot of information here. But you can also see that I've got another tab called Error Details. And when I click on the Error Details tab, Fusion Reactor tells me that this particular request generated a null pointer exception. If I scroll down here, Many of you will recognize this. This is a stack trace. And if I click on the JSP service, see what happens. So Fusion Reactor decompiles that class and it highlights the actual point in the code where this error occurred. So you can see this occurred at line 117, so 117. And this is the decompiled Java that you're looking at here. So this is really a really, really neat way of uh, being able to see where a particular issue occurred in your production environment. And you saw that the decompile occurred very, very quickly. So there's very, very little overhead here. So if I close that and then I click on the actual file name here, let's see what happens. So Fusion Reactor throws up a dialog. And in this dialog, it allows me to set a breakpoint trigger. And when a breakpoint trigger is fired, then what happens is there's a so-called trigger handler. And in the first case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the trigger handler to be an email alert. So what this means is when this exception fires, Fusion Reactor is going to send me an email with all the details about the stack trace and all the variables at the point that this error occurred. So let's confirm that. OK, so I've already got a breakpoint here. That's not a problem. I'm just going to update that. And you can see 
this is my breakpoint and I'm going to send an email alert and if I go back here and I run this once again then that runs and if I go into my email and click my inbox you can see I've just now received an email from Fusion Reactor there's a Fusion Reactor production debugger alert and if I click on that I see all the um, uh, the transaction details, so the um, uh, thread ID, the URL um, that was uh, that was run here. I can see uh, the time that this was run and the date. And what I can also see is a complete stack trace at the point that this error occurred. And again, we can see this failed at line 117 in null pointer underscore JSP and if I scroll down I'm able to see all the variables that were available at the point that that error occurred and if I look down here I can see I've got a variable arg and the value for that is null so this is a pretty clear uh, message here that probably the reason why this thing failed is because I've got an uninitialized argument so let's go back and go back into Fusion Reactor now and let's take this one step further so if I go in here and for the trigger handler now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause this thread and I'm going to pause the thread for 120 seconds so for two minutes and if you see up here I've got something called fire count now, fire count was set at always, but I'm going to change that to be fire count one. And what this means is that this trigger handler is only going to fire on a single thread. So this will only fire one time and one time only. And that's really important when you're trying to um, control how the production debugger is actually um, acting in production. Um, obviously you don't want it to fire every single time um, if you did that then what it could do it could actually uh, stop the whole execution of your application if it fired let's say you've got it in an initialization method and uh, you set a breakpoint there and that initialization method is called from every page then if you set that to um, fire count always then you could potentially have a problem but with fusion reactor you can control that so I'm going to control this to only fire one time and I'm going to pause this thread for 120 seconds. So if I confirm that now and you can see here that next to um, this file and at this line Fusion Reactor is um, confirming that I've got to fire one time and currently I've fired zero times. So if I go back in here now and I run that again then you can see in the browser this is spinning so that request is not completed and if I go back into Fusion Reactor I can see I've now got this little orange bug and the orange bug means that I've got a paused thread and that paused thread is waiting for us to intercept it and to actually start debugging it. and you can see here uh, it says timeout in 96, 95, 94, so this is counting down. Remember we gave ourselves 120 seconds, so two minutes. So I've got two minutes to actually intercept this thread. And if I click on the debug icon, then we're straight into the Fusion Reactor production debugger. And you'll notice here that this is the actual source code. So this is the actual JSP file. That, um, that we're showing here so not the Java like we saw before so you can tell Fusion Reactor where your source code is located and it will go and look up a specific file and it will translate the uh, the breakpoint into the actual number within your source code so the actual line number within your source code and you can see on the right hand side we've got all the variables that are available in context at the exact point that that, um, that breakpoint fired and what's really interesting down here at the bottom on the right hand side this is the actual call stack and if I click on the little link 
next to each line in that stack, what we're seeing is we're actually traversing up and down the stack here. Now, as I'm sure you'll know, many times an error occurs somewhere higher up in the stack, but that error doesn't actually manifest itself until some point at a at a later date, at a lower level in the stack. So it's really, really important to be able to um, have this capability to go up the stack, to interrogate variables, and uh, basically to get complete insight into what your application is currently doing. So if I go back down now to my null points of JSP file, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to modify this and I'm going to modify the argument null to hello fusion reactor. This is great. And if I then resume execution, you can see up at the top here, um, we've got four icons. So this is resume, step out, step in, and step over. And if I resume execution here, you'll see immediately this thread now completes and the text which we just entered, Hello Fusion Reactor, this is great, gets displayed. And if I go back in here and go back into my breakpoints, I can see now that for this particular breakpoint, we'd set it to fire one time. It's actually fired one time now. And if I go back in here and I run this again, as expected, it should fail immediately because we only told Fusion Reactor to set that breakpoint one time. So that was the end of the presentation and I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you have any questions or queries, we'd love to hear them and please contact sales at fusion-reactor.com and don't forget you can download your 14-day free trial of Fusion Reactor Ultimate which includes a production debugger from our website at www.fusion-reactor.com download. Thank you.